is on both of us. All right, here we go. So what are we going to talk about this week? Well, there's, there's a great deal that's happening. Let me start off uh, by showing people a beautiful uh, poster that uh, just came out of the printer's office today. And what this describes is a project that I'm very, very excited about. Uh, this year, the city of Burlington is going to undertake the most extensive and ambitious beautification uh, project that we have ever done. Uh, and one of the reasons that we're going to have such a good project is that the Howard Bank was very gracious and made an $18,000 grant to the city uh, for the beautification effort. And that covers about 75 or 80 percent of the total budget that we're going to need. So what we're going to be doing, and I should point out that if we're going to be successful, we're going to need a lot of volunteers. So I hope that people, as they listen, uh, will think about the possibility of volunteering. The project is going to entail a number of different aspects. On um, April 25th, which is a Saturday, we're going to be planting about 200 new trees throughout the city of Burlington. Uh, in the last three or four years, we've planted some 2,500 trees, some of them small, some of them very large. We're going to continue that. And this year, this spring, we're going to plant 200 new trees. To make that uh, project a success, we're going to need volunteers. And our hope is that people who are interested in volunteering, in volunteering will give the mayor's office a ring at 658-9300, mayor's office. Uh, and George Tabo, who's my assistant, will, tr will talk with, with you. Uh, and we can plug you into the uh, project. How many volunteers have there been in the past, do you think? Jeez, we have had on tree planting days between, if my memory is correct, 100 to 200 people. That's, that's quite a few people, isn't it? Quite a few people. And the commitment would be probably at this point from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock or maybe even less time. But it, it's, it's really an it's exciting thing and it's a lot of fun because you can really see the impact that you make. I mean, after you leave, there is going to be a tree standing uh, that wasn't there before you started. So we hope that people will come out. And the reason that we've been successful in this project in the past is because we have had volunteers and we're going to need volunteers again. Okay? So that is Saturday, April 25th for those people who are interested in tree planting. Have all those trees um, survived? No, but the vast majority of them have. I think when you plant trees, you understand that some of them, uh, for a variety of reasons, will die. Uh, some of them are vandalized. And that's few things that get me more upset than seeing some beautiful young trees uh, ripped apart and that happens but if my memory is correct we have in fact uh, about 90 percent of the trees that we've planted have in fact prevailed and, and, and stayed and that's uh, pretty good I think we also made a mistake a couple of years ago in that some of the trees that we've planted along some of the larger streets such as Winooski Avenue were too small and what we're doing now is planting larger trees they're a little bit more expensive but the likelihood of them surviving is that much better how come the um, Howard Bank got involved in this? Well, one of the things that uh, I have been uh, doing uh, is starting a process by which I am communicating with the banks in the city a little bit more than we used to. Uh, it is no secret, of course, that the banks in our community receive their money from the people in this community. We all put money into the banks, and they make a profit on that. And I think it is absolutely fair to say to the banks, to ask the banks, to say, okay, you're parts of our community, you're making money in our community, we would like a very positive relationship with you. Uh, and we want to be sure that you're investing in our community and you're helping us do the many projects that need to be done, especially at a time of federal cutbacks and our dependency on the property tax. And uh, I'm very proud to say that I called up Bill Chadwick, who is the president of the Howard Bank a few weeks ago. Uh, Bill came in and I said, you know, we have an ambitious beautification project that we would like to undertake. And within a couple of days, he was back to us uh, with a very, very large grant that will make this project a uh, success. So we're very grateful to the Howard Bank uh, and appreciative of their grant. That's great. On May 2nd, so if you're into tree planting, that's April 25th. Uh, on May 2nd is a green up day. And what's special about this green up day is the city's landfill is going to be open uh, free of charge for city residents uh, who are non-commercial, obviously. We don't want the uh, commercial haulers to, to use it on that day. But if you're, you know, if you live in the city of Burlington uh, and you want to clean out your attic and clean out the basement and get the crap out of the uh, backyard, uh, May 2nd is the day because you can take all of your stuff down to the landfill 
free of charge. Uh, on that day, we're also going to have volunteers working with the Parks Department and the Public Works Department uh, going throughout the city, getting rid of the litter that's, uh, that in the city, that's in the city. Uh, you know, when the snow melts, you begin to see a lot of things that are not very attractive. Yeah. So we want to clean up the city on that day. Uh, we want to clean up the waterfront area, the parks, and uh, we'll be assembling here in City Hall. We'll have uh, the, the uh, implements that will be needed. We'll have plenty of plastic trash uh, bags. Uh, and again, we're going to need volunteers to make that project a success. That's May 2nd. That's May 2nd. Now, if you're not into tree planting, and if you're not into green up or clean up, don't be depressed. We still have something for you. Uh, on May 30th, we're going to be doing uh, far and away the most extensive flower planting effort that we have ever done uh, in our history. Now, uh, some years ago, I was uh, in Quebec City, and I'm sure that many of the viewers were in Quebec City, and there, there are other cities like Quebec City that just go out of their way to plant uh, large numbers of flowers. Uh, and they have flower beds throughout the city. And the impact of those flower beds, in my mind, is just extraordinary. Uh, it just adds a lot of natural beauty uh, to the city. And my hope is that, and expectation is, that this year we'll be planting uh, at least a dozen major flower beds in parks and in uh, through fairs throughout the city. So people should be seeing a lot more uh, in the way of beautiful flowering, flowers uh, throughout the city of Burlington. And we're going to need help on that one. Now we intend to hire a coordinator who will stay on top of that uh, throughout the year, but we are going to need volunteers on Saturday, May 30th to help come out and plant flowers. So if people have experience or you don't have experience, come on out and uh, help make the city more beautiful. Now, in the spring and summer also, is part of a second year effort. We are going to be sponsoring a home and business beautification contest, which will give awards uh, in August to those residents and businesses which in fact uh, have the most beautiful property. Uh, last year, uh, we had- are, are these combined or are they separate? Separate categories, separate categories. And last year, we had some just beautiful gardens throughout the city, people who did it on their own, no city money, uh, just maintained and, and uh, their flowers, and, and it was just beautiful, and we want to acknowledge that and encourage that. So we hope that people will get involved and in, in, in plant, uh, uh, do some flower planting in their gardens. And lastly, uh, which is not included on the, uh, the poster here, is we're going to expand the program that our Community and Economic Development Office has been working on for the last few years, and that is a painting and sprucing up uh, project. Uh, we will make available to families that don't have a lot of money uh, free paint and perhaps some volunteer help in order to paint uh, their homes. Uh, one of the nice things that we have seen in the old North End, for example, and in other areas, is some homes that were really dilapidated have been turned around for a lot of reasons. We have the uh, Community Land Trust doing work, we have the Youth Employment Program involved, and uh, we want to help those people who just don't have a lot of money uh, get free paint to spruce up their uh, their houses. Is this part of the home improvement program or is this separate? Well, I'm not sure how we'll work it out, but we're gonna add to what has been going on. And we'll, we'll uh, it'll be part of the beautification process. So, uh, to make a long story short, this year, uh, we are going to have the most extensive and ambitious beautification effort that we've ever had. Uh, and I'm excited, I'm excited because this, in fact, is a beautiful city. We are really blessed. The fact that we have the hills uh, on the east part of our city that we look out over the lake, we have the mountains behind the lake, that physically we are blessed with being a beautiful city. We are making real progress on our waterfront to enhance the beauty of that area. And I think it's important that all of us pitch in uh, to make the city as beautiful as it possibly can be. And, and the theme, the theme of the effort is take pride in Burlington. We are a beautiful city and let's enhance that beauty. So that's uh, one project that I'm very excited about. Does anyone have any problems with that? Pr with that project, do you think? Actually, yeah, I suppose those people who like ugliness and dirt and filth, they'll think it's not a good project. But There's no one that's, that's um, there, there are no letters to the editor or letters to the mayor saying that that's a waste of money or anything like that. Well, that, the interesting point, I didn't make that point clearly enough, is that in the past 
what we have done is cooperated with the business community, and the business community has been very generous in this respect, in point the fact this time, although we're going to have the largest budget we've ever had, it's going to be probably uh, all covered by private donations. The Howard Bank's $18,000 uh, grant will cover 75 or 80 percent of the budget, and I think we can pick up the rest from the private sector as well. So the beauty of this particular project is that it's going to cost zero or very, very little city money. So I'm, I would, uh, people who oppose this, I think, would be pretty hard pressed. It's not costing the city any money, and we're going to go a long way to planting trees and flowers and cleaning up the city. So uh, I think this is a project of which there should not be terribly much political controversy. Great. Now let me talk about a project of which there will be oh, yeah? controversy. What's that? What's that? Well, let me just touch on again what is um, an issue of absolute major concern, should be, to the taxpayers of the city of Burlington and the school children of Burlington. That, of course, is the state aid to education uh, formula. And let me just brief the citizens of Burlington uh, and other communities what we are doing. Now let me uh, give a little bit of background here. As uh, I hope many of the viewers know, um, several weeks ago, the House of Representatives in Montpelier passed a $32 million state aid to education program, which was strongly supported by Governor Kunin. And the, uh, it, it's uh, based on a what they call a foundation distribution formula. Now, the essence of what that uh, distribution formula does, in brief, from my point of view, is this. Despite the fact that $32 million is an extraordinary increase in state aid to education, uh, and despite the fact that we estimate about three more million dollars will be leaving the city of Burlington from our homeowners, from the business community, to go into education, the children of Burlington will get zero dollars back. Zero dollars back. And that, to me, is beyond comprehension. But Burlington, of course, is not the only community that is being, being treated uh, unfairly by this formula. Uh, right here in our own county, Winooski, and, you know, it's amazing to me that people can, anyone, can think that Burlington or Winooski are wealthy communities, are rich communities. They're just, just so stupid. Um, Winooski... Well, I mean, there, there are lots of rich people and rich stuff here, right? Yeah. There may be rich people here, but that does not make us a rich community. Uh, you, d you determine what are, uh, that a community is rich if, if everybody is rich or people do not have economic problems. In Burlington, the vast majority of our people are having a hard time making ends meet. They cannot afford higher and higher property taxes. In the Bond School and in the Wheeler School in the Old North End, uh, over 80% of the children in those schools receive free or discount lunches because their families don't have a lot of money. So anyone who wants to argue that Burlington is a wealthy community, we think is just totally off the mark. But well, how come they would think it would? It would. It would. I mean, I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't seem as if there can be a. I mean, it should be pretty obvious if no, it's. it's not. The problem is, it's like saying, Nat, are you a nice guy? Well, there's some people who think you're a nice guy, some people might think you're a jerk, you know? And you can debate that issue for 28 years, depending on the criteria that you're going to use. You can make a case and come up with a formula that says Burlington is the wealthiest community in the world. You can come up with another formula equally valid, which will say that Burlington is an extremely poor community. It depends on what you want to throw into the formula. Um, if you look at the income factor, which means the ability of people to pay. You know, if you don't have any money, in my definition, you're not wealthy. Many of our citizens are poor, are elderly, working class people who do not have a lot of money to pay higher and higher taxes. To me, that indicates that we're not a wealthy community. Now, on the other hand, if you want to say, does Burlington have a reasonably prosperous downtown? Do we have a significant manufacturing and industrial base? The answer is we do. Does that make me wealthier? Does it make you wealthier? No, it doesn't. Does it have some ability on what kinds of property taxes residential uh, homeowners will pay? It does. The question is how you tie in property wealth worth versus income. income, And that's, that's been the debate. To make a very long story short, the present formula not only will give zero dollars to Burlington, and what that will mean without any increase in state aid is that property taxes in Burlington will soar every single year for the indefinite future. That is the main point that I want to get out to the people of Burlington. If you do not get state aid, the only place that the school department will have to look for additional money is to the homeowners and the property taxpayers. And beyond a doubt, although you know I don't deal with their budget, but there's not the slightest doubt in my mind that every single year for the indefinite future they will be back 
for significant property tax increases. And the reason is because we're getting nothing from Montpelier. We are now are paying for our schools, over 95 percent of that budget comes from the property tax. Totally insane, totally unfair. Now, in addition to Burlington being in that position, Winooski is intended to get zero increases, Essex Town, Essex Junction, South Burlington, Williston, Bolton, among communities in Chittenden County. Outside of Chittenden County, Rutland City is suddenly defined as a wealthy community. They're not. Where's all this, um, where's the 32 million going? Uh, good question. I don't have the chart in front of us. Some communities are doing very, very well. All right. In our county, for example, uh, two communities that do extraordinarily well are Milton and Colchester. Around the state of Vermont, other communities do very, very, very well. Uh, oh, th 32 million worth? Well? 32 million dollars is distributed, yeah. Yeah. So 80 communities will get nothing. Over 80 communities will get zero, and the rest of the communities will get something. something how many else. communities are there? Well, it's more or less, I guess, two. Uh, actually, I'm not sure how many school districts they are. There are 246 cities and towns. So most will get increases, some will get zero. Uh, and for the people who get zero, there will be significant property taxes in years to come. So what my job is now is to work with those communities that don't have a lot of money and who are not being treated by, fairly by this formula and rally them. I'm going down to, um, I'm going down to Brattleboro on Monday. I'm going to be in Rutland on Monday. Those are two communities that are getting zero. And furthermore, we have sent out a letter that many of the residents of Burlington probably will have received by the time this program is aired. If not shortly, they will have received. There's a letter from uh, my office, from the Board of Aldermen, and from the school board uh, denouncing the state aid to education uh, plan and urging them to contact Governor Kunin, who is supportive of it, to contact uh, Senator Hoff, who is chairman of the Senate Education Committee. He has the power basically to rewrite the formula and the other five Chittenden County Senators. We can turn it around. And if the Senators from Chittenden County and the, general, and the Senate in general knows how strongly people feel about it, we can stop that formula and get a fair shake for the kids in Burlington. And for all the kids. For all the kids. And, and this is all because of, of um, federal cuts, right? No. This kind of, no? No. This kind of, it's nothing. This basically is State aid to education has been going on in this state for many, many years. And, you know, they keep changing formulas as to how do you distribute the money. Uh, and what they have just decided this session is a new formula called the foundation formula. They used to have the Morse Giuliani formula. The foundation formula for distribution was passed by the Senate. It is now going to the House. I, I beg your pardon. It was passed by the House. It is now going to the Senate. If it is not stop, stopped in the Senate, the governor will sign it. Uh, it'll be a disaster for the taxpayers and children of Burlington. But it has nothing to do with federal aid. Basically, it's the state's commitment to education, which is appropriate. Our concern is not that there's an increase in state aid. Our concern is that uh, it is a horrendous formula for many of the communities. Okay. <clears throat> Any other? Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's only half the show, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, there's, there's uh, a lot else that's going on. Yesterday, no, not yesterday, last week, no, not last week, actually, it was a couple of days ago, uh, we announced a program which to me is one of the most exciting programs that we have initiated uh, in the city of Burlington in many years. And I wanted to explain that a little bit. The city of Burlington has a retirement fund for its city employees. and. We're very proud that six years ago, when I first became mayor, I, there were about uh, there's about $10 million in the fund. Now there's about $28 million in the fund. Essentially, the fund has been well invested. The stock market has, of course, uh, significantly increased its value. And we have now $28 million in that fund for our city employees. Benefits are now increased, etc. One of the issues that has concerned me for a long time and has concerned many people throughout the United States of America is how retirement funds, how university funds, how uh, nonprofit endowment funds are invested. Very important and interesting issue. What you have in this country is the, the unions themselves have literally billions and billions of dollars in their retirement funds. And historically, what they have done is allowed their investment counselors to simply invest it in any way that they wanted 
forgetting about the needs of their clients, in this case the unions if you like. And the irony that you have there is that often the money was invested in anti-union activity, uh, projects that union labor could not be allowed to be involved in. So I think the unions are beginning to wake up to the potential of that investment, uh, th th those tens of billions of dollars. Certainly we have heard a lot of discussion uh, surrounding the uh, investment of university money in terms of South Africa and what uh, universities around America are saying, what the city of Burlington has said with its investment fund, we choose not to invest in companies that are propping up the neo-fascist government of South Africa. And we made that statement last year and that's been implemented. Now what's happened is we made a further statement. We said not only do we not want you to invest in South Africa, we want you to use that money here in Burlington to improve the quality of life of our people in terms of improved housing opportunities, in terms of job creation, okay, in terms of economic development. So anyhow, it took a long, a whole lot of negotiations took place because the retirement system was concerned, as they have every right to be concerned, that the investment that they make is a good investment. In other words, it's not their job to give money away to anybody. They have to earn a good rate of return. Well, after a lot of negotiations, an agreement was worked out by which the retirement system is going to loan the community land trust, the Bur Burlington Community Land Trust, one million dollars so that they can purchase uh, property which can be converted into affordable housing. Okay, And it's impossible to estimate what the implications of that will mean, but we're guessing about 30 units of housing. 30 u new units of affordable housing, uh, probably units that will be rehabbed and then uh, leased out long term to low and moderate income people. So it's a very exciting project for us. Uh, the Community Land Trust is, has won an award from the United Nations for almost being a, a unique type program in America in terms of the city's involvement uh, with a nonprofit group that is creating affordable housing. So you have two, uh, a marriage here of two institutions, the uh, retirement system and the land trust and the result will be affordable housing, more affordable housing in the city of Burlington. Very exciting project. Is that controversial at all? The element of controversy is within the retirement system to make certain that they get a good return on their investment. In other words, what not, would not be acceptable to them, nor to me, is for them, for us to say, we want you to give this money to somebody interest-free, no profit. That would be unfair to the city employees. A rather complicated deal was worked out where there's going to be uh, a certain rate of return up front and a certain rate of return when the property is sold, and you combine the two, we think it's a, it's a pretty good deal for the retirement system. Uh, and from our point of view, though, what's exciting is the money is invested locally, it creates jobs, it improves our housing stock, so it's what they call a win-win uh, situation. Everybody wins. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good project. Can I ask you a question about Reagan? Ronald Reagan. Yes, yeah. you can ask me a question. If um, he's he's cutting federal dollars for lots of social programs, right? Yeah. And the, does he expect the business sector, to, not the business sector, the private sector, to pick up that? I think I mean that's been one of the fraudulent fraudulent elements of Reaganism. What he announces, which you may recall years ago, they don't use this term anymore. You know, Reagan has these PR guys, and they come out with statements, and then a few months later, they're forgotten. Some people may remember there was a concept called New Federalism. Remember that? New Federalism? No, but... Well, okay. Some people, <laughs> some people may remember it. And the concept of New Federalism, it sounds fine on the surface. What it says is, Reagan says, we want the federal government to get, get their hands out of uh, problems of state government and local government. We think that government is best, which is closest to home. Let local government solve their problems, let state government solve their problems. The federal government should not be involved in all of these myriad of things. Local government knows the problems better, state government, etc., etc. It's a fine theory. I agree with it. The only thing that Reagan forgot to mention is that the billions of dollars that the federal government were going to put, in, that had put in, they had put in to local and state uh, projects, they were now withdrawing. So what they were saying is not we want you to take responsibility for the problem, but we also want you to figure out how to fund the problem. You follow what I'm saying? In other words, it's like saying to you, I was taking care of something for you, okay? And it's okay for me to say, you know, I want you to take care of this project, but that I also have to say, here's the money that I was spending on it, and now you have the money, you do it, because we think you can do it better. 
local government in general can do it better. But without the money, we can't do it better. So, uh, you know, then Reagan makes the sh you know big deal about how the private sector is going to pick it up. No way. You know, it just can't do it because you're talking about tens and tens of billions of dollars. And the private sector through charity or through grants may help out a little bit, but they're not going to be replacing the loss of federal funding. We lost, as a city, $1 million, $1 million of federal revenue sharing. Now, today, for example, I was mentioning that the Howard Bank made a very generous grant of $18,000. Yeah? So $18,000 compared to a $1 million is not quite apples to apples. It's, a, you know, a fraction. So to answer your question, the private sector is not going to pick up uh, what the federal government has cut back. And they're using that extra money because they're, if, if they're not giving that money out, then they're then they've then that fellow, the government has it somewhere, right? And they're going to spend it somewhere else. I mean, the, the whole debate, of course, that's taking place in Congress and in this country is national priorities. Uh, some of us have felt that the military budget is grossly bloated, that there could be very significant cuts in the military budget, that you can have a progressive tax system which asks corporations and wealthy people to pay their fair share, and that you can adequately fund the many social programs that the federal government should be funding. So how come the people of the United States haven't gathered together to insist that this stuff happens? Well, that's the $64 question to that. You know, it's, I think there's a lot of ignorance out there as to how government works. Uh, people like President Reagan have tremendous resources. They're supported by corporations and banks, and they buy nice 30-second ads to tell us all how lucky we are to be Americans, and they rip off the system right and left. So, you know, it's, it's the same old story how the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, and the rich are able to buy politicians like Reagan. I think most people understand that Reagan is a spokesperson for the wealthy people in this country, and that's what happens. And the, you know, the job of people like myself and people who have our politics is to try to rally working people, poor people, elderly people to fight for their rights. So that's what's going on. Well, I still don't understand it, but... <laughs> <laughs> Look, here's a little bit of trash right here. <coughs> How are we doing? Well, that's getting close. 25 and a half minutes. Okay. Um, this week also we'll be announcing a very good program with another bank actually, the Bank of Vermont. And that will be a program for senior citizens. And uh, that program will essentially enable senior citizens in the city of Burlington to borrow money from the bank at a favorable interest rate to pay off their property taxes, to pay their property taxes. And the loan will not have to be repaid until the house is sold. Oh, right. you mentioned this yeah, I've talked about this before and that's going to be finalized next week. And it, 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 is this only the Bank of Vermont or is this... Yeah, this is a project we're working uh, with the Bank of Vermont on. Yeah, so people will be directed to the Bank of Vermont who are offering favorable interest rates. Now, it is not a panacea. This thing is not a cure for high property taxes. It is not a property tax relief program and nobody should think there's not a penny of public money in it. No city money, no state money, no federal money. What it uh, does do is it says to an elderly person who has a piece of property that in fact is increasing in value every year. Property in Burlington is going up. Now that same individual really doesn't want to sell the property. They want to live in that property until they die or until they, they choose to sell it. And uh, their problem is now coming up with cash to pay property taxes, for example. Now, if you and I go to the bank and take out a mortgage, what we have to do is make a monthly payment. So for an elderly person, even if they could get a mortgage, a borrow money, uh, very often their income is low, they're on Social Security, and they can't pay it back on a monthly basis. The beauty of this project is that you're not going to have to pay the money back until the house is sold. And that will include the appreciation of the value of the house every single year. For example, if you own a $70,000 home in the city of Burlington now, Everything being equal, the value of your home is going up 5, 10, 15 percent a year. So in a sense, you're making three thousand, seven thousand, ten thousand dollars a year on the home. Well, it doesn't do you any good if you don't want to sell it, right? right. You can't get any right. cash for that yeah. to pay your taxes. So what we have basically done is said, we are going to take that into consideration. We'll work with the bank, and people can borrow money to pay their property taxes, and they won't have to worry about paying it back until the house is sold, when in fact they are going to be getting cash, or their sons or daughters or family will. It's a good program. Okay, great. 
Well, okay. I think that's about it. Okay. Thank you, Doctor.